The ornate lamp warranted a closer look. The circle of iron was set into an ornate frame that covered the oil lamp. The medallion fitted snugly into the socket. Whoa, would you take a look at that? The light from the medallion is illuminating these red figures. This could be our ticket out of here. If you're right, that explains why Ganon never got out of here. He didn't have the medallion. That sounded like something important happened. The medallion fitted snugly into the iron frame. It focused light into a beam which shone on the far wall. The pillar had been sculpted into a tree and then painted blue. I knew it was supposed to be the Tree of Knowledge. There were ancient scratches on the plinth, as if someone had moved the statue. I'm sure that this is Mary Magdalene. The red robes! It all makes sense! The Madonna would be wearing blue! So, who's the child? Well. According to the Gnostic Gospels, when Mary kissed the lips of Jesus, she, uh... Oh, I see. Yep. So the Gnostics think that the suckling child is... I guess so. I gave the statue a push, and it turned anti-clockwise. That sounded like something important happened. I gave the statue another shot. Is that the door? Thank God! I was getting worried we'd be trapped here. Just the two of us forever. There could have been worse ways of being trapped forever. It is the door. Come on, Georges. I needed to grab the medallion before we left. It was way too useful to leave behind. Nico and I had the tabula veritatis at last. Now all we needed to do was to find Eva and rescue Marquez. And make our getaway. Don't die on me now, old man. Jules, it's Landon. Stay back. For the last time, where is the tabula? You'll never find it. It's here in this chapel, isn't it? Just tell him, Papa. I will tell you nothing. 
Look at your daughter, senor. My man would be happy to hurt her. I cannot let you raise Lucifer. You will bring chaos to the world. George, we have to do something. You're dying, old man. Tell me what I want to know. You'll never find it. With luck, Langham wouldn't notice that the gun was useless. Hold it there, Langham. Well, if it isn't my least favorite American. Where is the tabula? Even if I did have it, why would I give it to you? Because you don't have a choice. For God's sake, shoot him, George! Yes, go on. Shoot me, why don't you? Don't push me! That gun would never fire. Give me the gun before you hurt yourself. I didn't rate my chances with just a rusty old pistol. Now, do you have the tabula? I don't have it. We couldn't find it. You're lying. I promise you I will kill the old man. I ask again. Do you have the tabula? If I give you the tabula, then you promise you'll let us all go free? I give you my word. No, George, no. So, the tabula veritatis. Actually, I will need to take the girl with me. The old man would just slow us down. No, I'm staying here. My father needs medical help. If he doesn't get it, he will die. Oh, really? <laughs> no! Problem solved. Lagom, you're rotting hell for what you've done. Hell? Quite the opposite, believe me. The world will be a better place, George, once Jehovah has been destroyed. What? Lucifer will set us free. You can't destroy Jehovah. I can. And I will. Bring the girl. But you agreed to let us all go free. She may be of use yet. One of my men will be outside. If they try to follow me, shoot them. It would be my pleasure, boss. Eva. You must get the tabula back. We don't even know where he's going. All we know is that it's somewhere in the Middle East. Nothing else? There was a note, something about our destiny lies in paradise? And we found a map. It shows the source of four rivers, but that's all we have. Can it be? You know what that means? In Genesis, there is a river. It flows from paradise and divides into four. Where is this place? This paradise? Eden. He's going to Eden. The Garden of Eden? But that's just a Bible story, a myth. No, it's a real place. It's where Jehovah created life. Where Lucifer gave Eve knowledge. Where the gods are held in balance. And now Langham has the tabula to lead him right to it. Only you can stop him. You must defeat him. But how? Eva, she will know. He'd gone. But I knew he was right. We had to stop Langham. And rescue Eva. Listen, this is a big mistake. You have to let us out of here. 
You stick your head out of that door and I will put a bullet in it. You must let us leave. I could use the target practice. There was no way I was going to get out there with that armed guard. Marquez was dead. Nico, that thug isn't going to let us just walk out. Let me talk to him. Hey, handsome. Could you find it in your heart to let me out? Look, love. I'll just as happily put a bullet in you as your young friend. If you fancy your chances, then feel free to try and escape. I never miss. You could have just said no. Any luck? I gave you my best charming French damsel. Nothing. I think it's time to start thinking of another way out. There was a door at the bottom of the steps, but I would never have managed to reach it. Hey, Nico, I've got a plan. Over. Roger, George. What are you thinking? Over. I'm going to place the radio out here. Maybe it'll be enough to distract the guard. Give me a second to set this up, then start talking. Got it. I carefully positioned the radio in the drain. I'm warning you, I will shoot. The hammer hit the guard on the head with enough force to knock him out. Nico, let's get out of here! That guard won't be causing us any more problems. the guard. Uh, those steps must have been slippery. He took a little tumble. Nico, look! There's a cable car ready to go. Quick, before Langham locks down the system. You don't think perhaps we should have waited for the next one? Well, we caught it, didn't we? What's all the fuss? Now, if I can just open this window, I think we'll be fine. Okay, maybe not. Now, don't panic just yet. I, I'll think of something.
It's a little stuck. Just give me a second. Just hurry up! Nico! So, we meet again. I've come for my painting. What painting? La Maledicción. Gesundheit. Don't play games with me. We both know the painting conceals a treasure, Mr. Stobart. You know, even if the painting was yours, I wouldn't give it to you. You're just a common gangster. <laughs> a fine sentiment. But I won't let you cross me again. Again? You stole my ruble. My Platinum 12 ruble. Well, that was just an old coin. One hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of old coin. Wow. Look, I could do a lot of redecorating with that. Ah, uh, enough of your American humor. You will tell me where to find the treasure, and you will tell me now. Not gonna happen. And did you really just say, so we meet again? Hello, miss. Could you help me out, please? Sorry, no can do. But while you're down there, maybe you can clear something up for me. What? Something you said when we first met has been playing on my mind. Do I have a choice? Exactly. Exactly what? Choice. I don't follow. You see, I'm a determinist. Goes with this line of work. But what you said in London made me ask one of the big questions. Is there such a thing as free will? Because if there is, then I've made some pretty dodgy choices in my time. So help me out a bit here. So, do you have regrets? No, I don't think so. But I am a little worried. This whole free will thing has got me thinking. What do you enjoy in life, Shields? Well, uh, I like footy, a good scrap, and topiary. We have a choice. We always have a choice. Just like you've got a choice right now. Help us or not. I don't know. I'd like to. But the boss... My philosophy class seemed to be working. Can't you stop, Madovsky? As I said, it would be futile to try. His actions are predetermined, like mine. So, you're a football fan, right? Gotta love the beautiful game. So, if determinism was valid, why would anyone play? What would be the point of it all? Hmm. Sometimes when we lose, that's just what I think. So, you're a determinist. Isn't that just an excuse to let Medovsky boss you around? At least I know who's controlling me actions. Do you? Of course. I do as I choose. So, you chose to leap off that cable car, did you? Yes, because you and Madovsky shot at me. You did choose to shoot at me, didn't you? Well, yes, but I didn't choose to shoot that geezer in the gallery. You never intended to kill Henri? I just wanted to rough him up a little. But the gun went off and the rest is history. Free will didn't come into it. But you'd made a choice not to shoot him. The fact he died was an accident. Hmm. 
So you think I've got a chance of redemption? See? You didn't choose to kill Henri. He died regardless. Exactly. It was accidental homicide. If by redemption you mean a spell in jail with done off a good behavior, then yes. I think there is a chance for you. And you know what? No. Enlighten me. I'm getting too old for this crime, Lark. I think I'm having an epiphany. Of course, it might just be indigestion. No, it's definitely an epiphany. I think you're right. The only thing that has led me here is me and my actions. I'm going to talk to the boss. He's sure to listen to reason. Boss! Boss! What is it, you imbecile? How many times have I told you not to interrupt me when I'm about to kill somebody? Remember what we agreed. I am the big man who takes care of the big things. And I am the little man who takes care of the little things. <laughs> exactly. So, haven't you got a little thing you should be doing? Hmm. There is one little thing, now you mention it. Well, don't let me stop you. Get on with it, you big baboon. If you say so, boss. Oh. Oh, dear. There you go. Free will under orders. Now that is what I call a real paradox. Charles? You took your time back there. Yeah, but Oski and I had a lot to catch up on. And you and Shears seem to be getting on just fine. So, I figured you'd holler when you were done. Always nice to see old friends. Oh, thank God it's you two. You would not believe what just happened. Try us. Oh dear, the monks aren't gonna like that. We had a little philosophical disagreement on the way up. Nothing the little TLC won't fix. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're not really broken, more in uh, a transitional state. <laughs> It's amazing what a lick of paint can do. What now, Charles? We find Langham, we stop his crazy plan, we rescue Eva, and you win a Pulitzer. <laughs> when you put it like that, Charles, sounds easy. So, how are we going to catch Langham now? Well, we've got a pretty good idea where he's going. True, Mesopotamia, or Iraq as it is now. Not exactly a prime tourist spot. Need a lift? I don't think we'll catch Langham in a limo, but thanks. I'm not talking limo, mate. I'm talking Madovsky's full-on, fully-fueled taxi ticket Learjet 60. You think you can get us to Iraq? Wouldn't be the first time, if you know what I mean. I've got the keys, the contacts, and a full drinks cabinet. How about it? It's the least I can do. The last thing I remembered was getting on board Madofsky's jet and accepting a cocktail from Shears. Hello? Anybody there? What happened to the lights? Is that better? Whoa! Senor Marquez? Indeed. Hello, George. But... you're... dead. Does death worry you? You bet. I got a nasty feeling it's coming my way. You have no choice. You cannot allow Langham to destroy Jehovah. Lucifer and Jehovah must rule in harmony, or chaos will prevail. Don't listen to him, George. 
He is here to lead you astray. He is a Gnostic, a heretic. Lucifer is the devil. He should be defeated. Jehovah must reign supreme. Whoa, hold your horses, Padre. I'm no big fan of the devil, but follow Jehovah and what do you get? Subservience, repression, mindless conformity. Not my cup of tea, pal. I'm more into sex, drugs and rock and roll. Bacchus is the god for me. Ah, see what you get when you turn from Jehovah. A paint-spattered hedonist. Don't listen to either of them, George. A heretic and a lazy drunk. Hey, I'm not lazy. Nor I a heretic. I were best forger in the business. And I gladly died for my faith, as did thousands of my ancestors. Whoa, 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 fellas, fellas, please. My dream, my rules, okay? That seems to me that what you call greed, he call ambition, and your subservience is his order. In just about an hour's time, I'm going up against a guy who intends to destroy God. I need advice. Practical advice. Have a stiff drink and go down fighting. You're a dead man walking anyway. Nonsense! Put your faith in God, and He will be your shield. Don't listen to them, George. They're both wrong. Maintain the harmony. Protect the balance. But how do I... You have the answer in your hands, George. In my hands? Uh, what do you mean? Josh? Josh, wake up. You were dreaming. What? What? Oh, What was all that about? You were dreaming. Something about sex and drugs from the sound of it. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Are we there yet? Well, that looks like the source of four rivers, so the Garden of Eden is right down there. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain speaking. I hope you've had a pleasant flight. The temperature in Eden is a pleasant 30 degrees centigrade. We shall be landing on a flat plain about two kilometers into the desert which you will find is a pleasant stroll to your destination. Fasten your seatbelt and all that gubbins. Finally, may I take this opportunity of thanking you personally for choosing to fly air shares. We do hope you'll fly again with us soon. Come on, I think we're nearly there. Wait, Shields. I think Shields is having a moment. <laughs> Bleeding hellfire. I'm... I'm cream crackered. Just give me a moment. You go on. We'll catch you up. What do you think we're going to find? Well, that I guess. Ancient prophecies, supernatural curses, devil raising. Well, let's hope it's our lucky day. You okay? <sighs> yeah. Just... Just give me a moment. Hey, Nico, check this out. I don't think that will help us right now. Hey, Nico, check this out. I don't think that will help us right now.
Hey, Sears. Want a cookie? Blimey, rich tea. What's the special occasion? You're too kind. Mm. Mm. Oh. Mm. Hey, Nico, check this out. I don't think that will help us right now. Hey, Sears. Have you met my friend Trevor? But he's a cockroach. Shh, don't tell him. I don't think he knows. Oh, sorry, Trevor. He says that's okay. Guys, there's a small problem. Is it Langon? No, it's worse than that. Come look. Oh, Georges, stop being so overdramatic. Oh, look, a goat. You like goats? Love them. Hey. We could call it Donna. Oh, what a lovely name. Isn't it, Princess? Are you hungry, my lovely? Okay, while you get all David Attenborough on us, I'll take a look around. That's a Wolfram truck. Which means Langham can't be far away. It was a huge natural stone arch. This whole place was amazing. It was an old gnarled fig tree. It looked like it had been growing here for many years. One limb, just out of reach of the goat, was laden with ripe figs. Would you like one of these figs? Why not? Thanks. Hey, Sears. Would you like a fig? No, thanks. I don't do fruit. Apart from wine, of course. It devoured the fruit greedily. Nico, what is it with you and goats? What is it with you and goats? I'm not the one who's alienated an entire species. Hey, Sears? What? Feeling any better? This heat makes me feel proper pony. Know what I mean? Uh, no. A giant stone head lay on the ground. A giant stone head lay on the ground. A large statue of a creature with a winged bull's body and a human head. Looked pretty intimidating. There you all are. But where's Langham?
What have we got here then? Do you think the boss is coming out? Dunno, and don't care. I was only here to blow a hole in that rock. Job done. Just waiting for me ride home. Let's give him half an hour, Max. This place gives me the willies. Oh, don't be such a wuss. A few old statues. What could possibly go wrong? Like you said, 30 minutes. We need to get past these idiots and stop Langham. Tricky. They've got some tasty looking shooters. Besides, I'm a reformed man. I've given up senseless violence. Miss Collard is leading me out of the darkness and into the promised land. One day at a time. Oh, that's great shooters. Great. Terrific timing. I guess we're going to have to find a way past them. Another intimidating statue. A giant stone head lay on the ground. The back of the truck was full of sealed boxes and crates. A knapsack had been thrown on top. I grabbed the knapsack. It was full of military items. I had an idea. I wondered just how much that goat liked figs. Hey, goat. Want a fig? With my best throw, I tossed one of the ripe figs. It landed close to the group. None of them spotted it. I casually tossed a fig to the bottom of the path. Hey, Sears. Hello, my darlings. 
What's all this stuff? Uh, explosives mostly. Right little treasure trove. Is that what I think it is? Careful! Dynamite is fickle, unpredictable and dangerous. Just like her indoors. No gymnastics while you got that stuff in your pocket. If you can't repair something with duct tape, you're not using enough duct tape. The classic badass lighter. I took it. I needed all the help I could get. I'm guessing this isn't a giant stick of gum. Dead right, Georgie boy. It's TNT. Don't worry about it, though. It's perfectly safe. As long as you don't pull that timer cord. And if you do, give us a shout first. What's that? Fuse wire. Cut a length off, stick it in something that goes bang, light it and do a runner. Sounds simple enough. It is, until you make a mistake. What on earth is that, Shears? It looks dangerous. Careful! It could be anything. Jelly ignite, plastic, or... <laughs> it could be someone's lunch. Yeah, I think what you got there is a sausage. Local delicacy, I expect. I knew it was a sausage. Shears knew it was a sausage. But one tiny length of fuse wire and... Voila! Dynamite! Nico, a hand please. You seem to have a bond with these creatures. I hope you're not thinking of harming Donna. Trust me, a cunning six-phase plan is forming. Wholly approved by all the major animal rights organizations. Just keep her still for a second. Why have you attached the sausage to Donna? That's phase one. Now, watch as the others come together. If it's all the same to you, I'll watch from over there. I had a fake piece of dynamite strapped to the goat. Phase one of my plan, complete. Now I just had to figure out phases two to six. That should do the trick. The goat wore a sausage around its neck. A fuse wire protruded from the sausage, fizzing angrily. Cry havoc and let slip the goats of war. Oh, hello, Gorty. <laughs> oh. uh, fellas, what's he got round his neck? Looks like. Oh my God, Scarpa!
Langham's guards must have been spooked. There was no sign of them. So, in there then? It looks dark. I ain't going in there. Tight spaces give me the heebie-jeebies. Why don't I stay here and make sure the three wise monkeys don't come back? 